Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Creamy Trent. Today is Floral Friday and so we're painting some morning glories. Um, it's a very simple, straightforward tutorial. I teach you how to draw it out and we're going to be doing wet on wet, pulling some paint up and then some wet on dry. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start by doing a sketch of the morning glories. Um, I did a light pencil sketch in, but I'll show you with the marker so it's uh, easier for you to see. So they're kind of like a circle shape with a little, I would say kind of dent in them, so they're not particularly circle or like that. And you could make it in a circular shape. And then they have the center, which will paint yellow. Um, they come in all different colors and blue, purple. In the center outward, they kind of look like they have stars in a way. But we're going to just, I'm just sketching this in, but it's really going to be white when you paint it. And then we'll do another one on over here, a slightly more of an oval shape because it's going to be kind of on its side. We'll have the indentation here to almost like a smile, right? And then you'll have the lines coming outward from the center of that. And then the bottom half, you'll see some of that. And then we'll go into the stem. Um, under this particular morning glory, we'll put a leaf. Um, they have those typical kind of vine leaves. Again, we'll put another one down here, a little bit bigger. Again, with the circle, kind of like those star white area. And of course, there'll be lines coming outward. Well, we'll do those as we paint them. Another one up here on the side. So you'll be doing like almost like a V, but circle on the bottom, coming back out here like a trumpet. And you squiggle those lines in there. And then add the stem. And do the inside of that. And then we're going to have one that's um, not opened. They're kind of like this pointy little spiral kind of shape. I don't know how to explain it. And the smaller ones over here and the typical on the vines. And then we'll do some more over here. Just lines curved. Those pointy little, they're like ready to bloom but not bloomed yet. And the vine. We'll add another leaf down here. Kind of like a, you can make it like a heart if you, think, if you but it's open. And then you just add the veins going this way. There you go. I might be adding this, uh, I think I probably should. I'll do a, a cleaner one and add it to um, Patreon later. I just can't do that this week. Because, well, maybe over the weekend. I'm quite busy. <laughs> it's a lot to do tutorials and I have clients breathing down my neck. Okay, so then you do the little squiggly circle. Up. You see that squiggly up there? I don't know if you saw that. So I just did like a squiggle. I'll just do like another one. Look at a little more adventurous. I'll put another uh, line here, squiggle. Just adding some fun character to it. And that's that. And then, you know, you can add some small leaves in here if you want. That's kind of like the rough outline of it that I'll be doing. And as I paint, I'm an intuitive painter. I might change it up as I paint. This is kind of how I go. I don't like to always follow the rules. If you're a rule follower, the sketch might be the best way to go. So now we're going to transfer this sketch onto the paper and then go from there. So I transferred the sketch. Um, I didn't realize that it was too much over to the left, so I'll compensate for that. I'll add another flower over in here. You know, another one of those like trumpet type flowers. A little smaller going down and then maybe some leaves coming over here. So, you know, don't need to redo it. And when you transfer it, it comes out a little darker. So I'll erase all those lines to make it just fading in the background. And I'm using a kneaded eraser. Um, I prefer kneaded erasers. I just don't want to deal with eraser clippings. And they're a pain in the butt for me. <laughs> And I like this. And um, how I transferred it, um, I don't know if you ever heard of this stuff called transfer paper. It's graphite paper. But if you don't have graphite paper, take the take a pencil and just rub it all on the back of this. 
and then use put it on here paper and then use your pen like I see how the pen marks right on top and then it should do the same thing it's basically graphite paper is basically that's what it is it's the graphite from a pencil so let's get started and this is on a um, arches uh, I think this is a five by ten piece of paper 100% co cotton cold press it's probably like my last piece I'm waiting for a shipment to come in tomorrow so um, the greens would be fairly bright on this one um, I'll use some of my and I'm getting new paint tomorrow Ooh, I'm so excited so we've got the medium green here I probably should have ordered a new palette but what can I tell you so we mix up the greens. I already have some hooker's green in here, with pretty dark, which is fine. I like to and I'll put the medium green right in there and brighten that up. So it'll have to be, it will be a bright green without having to be super bright. I also have my uh, paper towel, of course, my water pots. And I use a kind of a crappy brush in here, it's clanking, um, to make my paint. So it's going to be like this bright blue. I have a cerulean blue here. That's kind of the color of the morning glory almost. But we're going to add a little different tones to that. So here's that cerulean blue. Grab a little of the ultramarine, put that in there. Again, grab some more cerulean blue. We're going to need a lot of paint. You know, they come in purple, these morning glories. Um, down here, we're going to do our yellow the center just be down here it's a little greenish yellow there we go better all right so we could do a couple of things uh, we could paint it all wet on wet or wet on dry I'm gonna do a combination of the two how's that so I'm just gonna take uh, my Princeton Neptune number 12 this is a nice big fat belly brush a bit. <laughs> grab some water Put on the brush and I'm just going to fill in that circle with water. I'm going to leave the center white. I'm not going to touch it. Or I can just do the whole thing and then we could take it out with a paintbrush. I'm going to fill in the one down here too. These are the straightforward morning glories. The other one's a little bit tricky because they will be on their side. And I'm going to switch the brush now. Uh, grab my Princeton. If I don't see it, well, I'll have to grab something else. Uh, it's missing. Missing in action. My Princeton eight long rounds, so I'll grab a Grumbacker 10. And I'm going to grab this Cerulean Blue mixture. I'm going to bleed it all the way around here. I want to add some more deeper tones. I'll put some ultramarine in here, right on the edge. So I'm bleeding in this cerulean blue with the ultramarine in it. You can add a little purple too. Just want a little tinge. Why not? Again, put that blue in there. So you're going to fill it all in, except at the center. Even if you put it in the center, it's fine. Same thing with this one down here. going to fill this all in, leave a little white in the center, and this is the part where the wet on wet is fun. We're going to remove the paint. I know this seems counterintuitive, but not really. So I'm just going to put in a little more paint in here, a little thicker paint. And you can take some darker the some of the ultramarine make it a little darker and just go downward in here like this you see how it has those it's almost like a zebra stripe again over here okay now we're going to clean our brush and we're going to do that removal part you can use the same brush or a different brush you're going to clean it off and you're going to remove the paint going from the center outward. See that? Not in every area, just like the star we talked about. Just swooping up 
and then moving that paint all the way to the edge. See that? And as you get to the edge, you want to just lift the paintbrush so it's smaller. As you're doing that, you type, you wipe the paint on your paper towel. So you see me doing that. I know it seems counterintuitive, but this is a different technique. You could do the wet on dry, but this just makes it have a looser look to it. If it's still looking more paint is in there, just clean off your brush and go back in and swoop up the paint. I think it's fun. Just a way to, just a technique of doing it. And then you can go in and add some more creamy of the paint in here on the edges. See, I'm doing the, the lines next to it. Just like that. Again, with this one, same thing. Now on the side ones, we're gonna try wet on dry, so it's a combination today. Again, we're gonna remove the paint. See, I'm wiping that paint away. Now some got out here on the side, you can see that. If you don't want that, just go back in, take some water, remove it. And a paper towel, lift it up. Again, just removing that paint. And then you can go in and take some thicker paint, which is basically less water of the cerulean blue. Go inward like that. If you still feel like it's not white enough, you can just clean off your brush and just keep doing that. Or take a small one. See? It's eventually going to give. <laughs> it has to. Doesn't want to play, you know? That's just one way of doing it. Okay, so we'll do the wet on dry for the side one. So we're taking our paint that we had up here that was thick, and put some water in it. And now we're gonna paint this inward like this, downward strokes. See like that? Curve downward strokes. towards that center. And then the side is just this little, that part's not gonna be white, it's gonna be the blue. And then where those white areas are, you can go and grab that blue, with some darker blue and a little bit of the purple. See, I'm mixing those up. It's just a different way of painting it. See, just filling it in like that because I want the, this one to have a little bit of different technique. I'm just filling it in. Try not to get too close to the first one. This one's gonna be a little darker. I'm adding more cerulean blue to the edges and down in here. Now I will clean off my brush and I will try and swoop up some of this white so you can see 
and it's coming upward. Like I said, I like to paint intuitively. So the wet on wet, wet on dry for me is partial on this one. And I'll add some more of this paint. It's a little too deep blue. I'll have to water that down. So, I'm going to make this a little darker here. So it didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to, because that's how sometimes how things go. So I'll just take the brush and swoop up that color off the paint, just like we did the first one. It just didn't have a natural look to it, doing the wet on dry. So I'm just doing similar, lifting up the paint. And now it has a better feel similar to the other ones. Okay, and the side one is much different. We're going to be putting some wet on wet on that one. So I'm going to get this all wet. And then I'm going to add the blue. Same thing, cerulean blue. A little ultramarine. I'm going to go downward here. So it's very white on the bottom here, and then it goes white to blue. And has some darker tones on the outside. A little purplish tinge to it on the inside here. We'll just go like that. So it kind of fades into that blue, the white. So that's why the wet on wet would work better. And we'll clean up our brush and we'll swoop up a little of that paint. And there'll be a leaf behind it. So you'll know, You'll right now you couldn't see that there's white in there, but you'll be able to see it. Same thing with this one. We'll do the same thing here. Put the water down. There's a little blue tinge to it, but that's okay. I'll go in and I'll add the paint. See this stripe kind of movement, just swooping downward or vice versa. The paint should be less water, more creamy consistency. So it's bleeding, but it's not bleeding so much. We can take it straight from the tube at this point. There we go. And bleed right in there. Same thing up here. More creamy paint texture. And I'm bleeding right in there. There we go. Now we're going to work on the leaves. So I have this green color. I'm going to do wet on dry. Definitely on this one. Pretty fairly creamy, a little bit more water actually. And I dab it on my paper towel and then I'll go in. Well, that's really bright, huh? So when I put that paint down, I think I'm going to mute it with some other tones. Just fill in that leaf that you drew in. It's a fairly bright leaf anyway, but I want to add a little. You know me and my burnt umber. Sorry, folks, it's just what I do. <laughs> you could add a little bluish tinge to the leaf, but I'm adding a little burn on her, just a little bit, just to change it up a little bit. Same thing over in here. We've got that bright vine leaf. You know, and you can add in some really darker tones if you want to, if it's too bright. I'd take, go in and grab some of that indigo right on there let it lay right in there let it bleed in don't be afraid Just stick some dark tones in there never be afraid see I kind of bleed it into that color 
Well, that's more on top too. So the leaves are like kind of like a heart shape. Put a little indigo over here too. Put the line going down. Then I put the vines under here. The stems you see. I'm always going to grab a little of that dark paint underneath. Under this one, it's white and then green on the edge. So here, same thing, green. A little white to the tip. So I'll take off the paint and I'll get my brush clean. And I'll go in and I'll kind of fade that out a little bit. What on what? So this one too. So underneath, I have a slight green tinge to my under part of the Morning Glory. And I'll add a little green here. I'll just dab it in here, the under part. And then I'll have the stem, I'll add that. Again, put the stems in. And some, put some deeper tones towards where they're go hitting the flowers because they'll be having a shadow underneath. And I have this back leaf under here. I'm going to make this one a little bit darker. I added indigo to that one. I don't want all the leaves to have the same color tones. Clean up my brush and I'll grab some of the brighter green again. I'll mix it in with that indigo that I already had in there and put that leaf down here. You want a variety of greens, even though most of the leaves are supposed to be this bright green. I like a variety. It just gives it, you know, it has more of a, a better composition in my opinion. So I have another leaf behind here, so I'm going to put darker indigo here, and then I'm going to bleed it out. Clean up my brush, grab some more of that paint. Oh, that's a little too bright. I'll clean up my brush. I just take the paint that I put down, put some water, and just make a leaf. And then I'm just making some leaves over here. Grab that stem to that one. Put those stems. I'm just using the tip of my brush to make those squiggly stems. If you see that? Just using the tip. All right, and then the stem for that morning glory right there. I'll put a little green. Again, this one is still wet, which is great. It will bleed up into it. I'm just going to fill that in. You know, add some more vines all around to make it a little diff uh, more interesting. Much more interesting composition. Again, I'm adding some darker tone greens here. It has like a weird spiral, these uh, unopened blooms. Have fun with it, you know. Go a little wild, put some of the leaves down in here. Doesn't have to be serious. You can even throw in some little ones up in here on those little vines. And again, I'll add in some deeper tones. Okay, we're getting there. And the center, of course, is going to be yellow. So this one bled up a little bit, which we wanted it to do. I just cleaned up my brush, and I'm just going to push that paint on the edge of this underneath part. And then over here too. So it's a little green under there. And under here too. Now for the center, um, it kind of bled in here too much and I want it whiter. I might just grab a crappy little brush that I have. It's an old brush. Put some water on there. And go in and there and try and li lift up that paint. So you get some water on it, kind of scrub it. Not too much because you don't want to wreck the paper. 
and lift it up. Same thing here. If it doesn't lift up, hey, no big deal. You did your best. Just get it wet. Circular motion. You don't want to use a good brush for this. And take it up. All right, so that's as good as it's going to get. And I'm going to grab my yellow paint that I mixed. Um, this is like a deep yellow, a dark yellow. And just go in here and I'm going to put in my yellow center. I might put a little burnt umber right next to it, just a little bit, just to give it that umph shadow. But there you go. Oh, actually, no, we're not done yet. Excuse me. Um, we should do some veins on the... Well, here you've been hiding all along. <laughs> the Princeton 8 long run. Veins on the leaves. So we'll grab some, maybe some indigo, some poker green, a little burnt umber. Mix it all in that green. Or just grab whatever you can to make a darker green. Creamy texture. That's too dark. Get that creamy texture. Here we go. And so it means it has little water. You can do the veins down in here and just add these little veins. Just a nice little detail. Because vines have all that. Don't go too crazy, you know. Just a little bit. And then get some dark tones underneath these vines here. And I know here. We're just adding the finishing touches to our painting. But I think this is fairly straightforward and simple. This one seems a little flat. So I'll go back in with that color, wash it in a little bit, just in the edges here. See, it was pretty green, but it was just so flat. So I'm going to wash that in. And now it's more interesting. And there you go. And there's our morning glory tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy that. Like I said, I don't hold me to it because I'm <laughs> really in over my head these days. Um, I'll try and get the tracing up on the Patreon, uh, on the on the the Patreon tier for tracings. Um, I know some people are upset about the Patreon situation, but. I should have never done the membership. I realized there was not enough things you could do on it. Um, it just seemed so, uh, what's the word? You couldn't grow on it. You couldn't do anything else with it. And also that um, I found out YouTube takes way too much for the creators who do the membership channel on like Patreon. So Patreon is a much better platform for people. So I hope you guys aren't too upset, but it's just gonna work out better for everybody in the long run for me and for you because you'll have more things you can get what you can't get on the YouTube. It's not it's not really user friendly in my opinion. So um, I can't do any add-ons, attachments, PDFs, podcasts or anything like that. Any fun stuff. I know it's another place you have to go to but I think it'll be worth it. So thanks again guys for all your support. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this morning glory tutorial and take care and I'll speak to you soon.